everybody, my name is Skyth, and I can't believe it's less than two months till the release of the next Kirby game. With Kirby being my favourite Nintendo IP just towering over Splatoon and Xenoblade, I, like a lot of other people, am extremely excited for Kirby's first real 3D outing. So today, like I did with Splatoon 3 and the Gen 4 Pokemon remakes, I'm going to be going over 10 things that I want to see in Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Again, much like those two previous videos, which will be linked in the playlist at the end of this video and in the description below, this video won't be like my other top 10s or ranking videos, as these are in no particular order. They're just 10 things that I would love to see added to the next edition of the Kirby franchise. So without further ado, here are my personal 10 picks for additions I'd love to see in Kirby and the Forgotten Land. In both Kirby 64 and Kirby Star Allies, you were able to combine a lot of abilities together to make some incredibly overpowered boss killing machines. And personally, I adore this feature, bringing back the ability to combine weapons with elemental attacks or even just something as simple as combining two of the same elemental attack together would make for some incredibly fun levels and options for taking on stages. And seeing this feature return with more abilities than ever before would be really cool to see. I'd really like to see more unconventional abilities as well, maybe being able to combine something like Circus with the Ice ability in order to have every single one of those disjointed hitboxes freezing enemies or possibly even combining the elemental abilities. Maybe you could turn the tornado power up into a huge firestorm, or have a massive thundercloud creating a lightning shield for you, or even something as simple as combining the bomb and wheel abilities so you can create explosions while you're drifting around these massive 3D landscapes. I feel like if they really wanted to take this option one step further, a great way to do that would be to not only add in every ability that Kirby's ever been able to use, but also to give each one a hefty set of combinations, or maybe even allow every ability to combine Combine with each other, giving hours of replayability thanks to just how many combinations there would be. Kirby Return to Dreamland is arguably one of the best games in the entire franchise. I don't think there's any arguing that. And one of the coolest mechanics from that game was the ability to use super attacks. Insanely overpowered abilities that were mainly only used in two or three levels each and then maybe in a boss fight or two. So I want to see them bring this feature back in a big way. Maybe not having every ability be given a super form, but by dedicating maybe entire areas of the map to a single super ability. For example, there's a giant tree in the way that you can't get past. Well, if you have either the fire or sword super abilities, then you can use those to either cut the tree down or burn it to the ground. Or there's an area in the sky that's being blocked by a huge UFO that you can only move with the beam super ability or maybe even a new one that they add to the game. Just something to make these worlds feel more alive and give us the ability to return to older areas of the game and unlock new hidden secrets. admit, some of my favourite characters in the whole Kirby franchise are the ones who end up betraying you, but I am personally a bit sick and tired of this trope. Sure, it hasn't appeared since Return to Dreamland, but I really, really don't want to see another one of Kirby's supposed allies turning on you because they had evil plans the whole time. It worked well once or twice with Magalore and Marx, but I think a third time doing pretty much the exact same thing with only a new coat of paint would really drag this game down. If you want to make Elphilin a villain so badly, make him be manipulated by a higher power. In Instead of having him be the villain, have the villain manipulate Elphilin's kind and innocent nature into secretly doing the real villain's bidding without either Elphilin or Kirby ever noticing. It's a lot more fun watching someone pull the strings and make characters do things they wouldn't normally do than it is to find out that Kirby fans like myself are right to have trust issues. I know, I know, Kirby games of all things aren't exactly supposed to be difficult. In Star Allies, you can rack up over 300 lives before you reach the final world without breaking a sweat. But something like the True Arena is a definite test of strength. And I'm not talking about the spicy or even very spicy difficulty settings, I'm talking about Soul Melter EX. I want a side mode that is just high octane that shit the whole way through. Nothing but pure unfiltered torture that should only be taken on by the insane or the extremely dedicated. I love games and even side modes that are ridiculously hard for seemingly no reason. It's always fun to be presented with an absurdly hard challenge that takes forever to beat. 
because that wave of satisfaction after you do clear it is unrivaled. So if I had the choice, I would personally add an insanely hard side mode like the Soul Melter EX route of the True Arena and apply it to whatever appropriate extra modes the game has to offer. everything on this list, this by far seems the most likely. I really want to see Kirby tackle a fully 3D open world adventure. Or at the very least, I want to see less level to level gameplay. I'm not saying I want Kirby to take on a world the size of Breath of the Wild, but I'd love to be able to just go anywhere in the whole game, obviously barring areas blocked by bosses of course, anytime I want to. And if that's not possible, I'd love to at the very least maybe make this game a little bit like Shantae and the Seven Sirens. Where instead of it being a very strict level by level kind of thing, like Kirby pretty much always has been, there's a main hub area and a ton of vast connected massive levels that you can travel to and from as you please, so long as you go through the hub area to get to them, making it seem like you're actually traveling through each area of the world rather than just hopping from one part of the world to the next like you have done in all the previous entries in the series. it, Star Allies has some of the worst side modes in existence. Yes, Heroes in Another Dimension is fun, but that wasn't added till one of the final updates of the game. And for pretty much the entire game's lifespan, the only interesting addition was the True Arena. The baseball side game and the tree chopping one are insanely boring and barely last a few seconds. And sure, the guest Star Allies minigame is fine, but it's nothing incredibly substantial. What I want from Forgotten Land is something like Meta Nightmare Returns from Kirby Planet Robobot, a harder version of the main campaign with a new character with new abilities and new bosses to fight. Now I hope that they don't just rehash this side mode and that they do give us a new character to play as for this hypothetical game mode, maybe we could use DDD or possibly another new character that the game introduces. Also I'd really like to see something like the DDD dash game mode from Triple Deluxe as I unironically had a great time with that game mode and I'd love to see something as funny as that make a return to this new game. I know I literally just talked about the extra side modes the game could add onto the package after beating the game, but I swear I'm not just rehashing that last segment. What if after beating the game, a new area opened up for you to explore, with hidden boss fights and collectibles for you to grab, and this area could also tie into the return of super abilities. Maybe there's one of these super abilities that you get at the end of the game and during the final boss fight, or maybe even a gauntlet leading up to said boss fight, that after beating the game you can then use around the world, opening up this one brand new area for the first time giving you even more of the world to explore. I've almost never seen a Kirby game actually do this as most post-game content is almost always locked to being a new side mode. But being as we now have an entirely new change to the formula going from 2 and even 2.5D to full on 3D, I think this would be a great time to also change this tradition up as well. enjoyed the idea of having multiple characters from across generations join Kirby on his quest back in Star Allies. And while I'm not saying I want the option of having those 12 characters return, or even 12 characters in general, I think it'd be nice to maybe have at the very least four players able to play at once. And also for there to be new allies on this journey. Having Meta Knight, DDD, and Bandana Waddle Dee is still an option they could go with, but maybe adding two new characters instead of just DDD and Meta Knight again would be a nice change. From the current promotional material shown off, it seems like this is going to be exclusively a two-player experience at maximum, which is really disappointing considering every other console game Kirby ever had has always allowed you to use four players. All that would really need to be done for this to work would be to have these new characters locked behind certain points in the story. So if you wanted to play with three of your friends from the the very start of the game, then maybe the others could play as other members of the Waddle Dee town shown off in the trailer. Then as you complete more and more of the game, you unlock these cool new characters that you can now play as for the rest of the experience. With the option to stay as a member of Waddle Dee town always still being there just in case no one actually wants to use the new characters or just doesn't enjoy their playstyle. Air 
Ride is one of the most fun spin-offs this series has ever seen. So how much fun would it be to allow us to race random NPCs around these massive open areas? Or hell, if you wanted to, you could go full-on Kirby Air Ride and allow four Kirbys to Tokyo Drift their way around these forgotten lands. Maybe even having this be one of the side modes I mentioned earlier. How much fun would it be to get a whole ass side mode or even some optional mini games from the Waddle Dee Town, or even just as a method of transportation around these vast open worlds, that let us zoom around on warp stars or even other kinds of vehicles that you could customize and unlock via extra challenges you complete whilst racing around these abandoned areas. I think having the option to play this insanely fun side mode in a much more modern setting with refined controls and more power-ups to make the game even more fun would probably lead to me spending 99% of my time in this game playing this one side mode instead of completing the actual story. not only my most ambitious idea for this upcoming game, but also the least likely to happen. I want to see all the big bads come back from out of nowhere and you having to take them down in fully 3D environments. It'd make the timeline a bit fucky considering most of these villains were Kirby's allies in the previous game, but imagine how cool a Marks or Magalore or even Sectonia boss fight would be in a fully 3D environment. Even a much smaller fight like maybe Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright or even the HRH would be really cool to see. And this could tie into that post-game content I was talking about earlier. Maybe now that you've beaten the game, Dreamland is open to attacks again, so all the big bads swoop down at once and take a corner of each area of the map, leading you to playing as a new character on a side quest to take all of them down. Combining the idea of the interesting side modes, post-game content, and the return of other much larger threats in the Kirby series all at once. Again, I think this will be the last thing to happen on this entire list outside of bringing back the air ride feature. But still, the entire concept of a 3D marks fight is more than enough to make me want this more than anything else for this new entry in the series. So that is going to bring us to the end of the video. Did you agree with my ideas or do you think this game will go in an entirely different direction? Well, we only have less than two months to find out, but in the meantime, leave your ideas in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. And second, why not subscribe and hit that notification bell too? It's free and it helps out a ton. We're slowly closing in on 2,000 subscribers, so be sure to hit that red sub button to support the channel. Lastly, if you want to see more of me on other social media platforms, then you can find links to all my other corners of the internet down in the description. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, stay safe everyone. Peace.